What's up, Dorkanas? I've been getting into Lorcana because I figure a Disney game will probably stick around and I wanted to play a new collectible card game. I'm really only experienced with Hearthstone. Uh, so I still have a lot to learn with Lorcana and I haven't really found a YouTuber that like thoroughly goes through the card list and sort of like explains power levels or at least explains what they do. So I thought I'd just do that myself. Uh, and I'm like per almost a complete noob, so I don't know the cards almost at all. I don't know what decks are strong. I don't know what cards are strong. But I figure if I go and look through them, I will get an idea of the different decks and uh, the different synergies with the decks and the cards. So. so this is like the viewpoint of a total newbie to Lorcana. So whatever I say is not going to be possibly accurate. Uh, I might say a card is really good, or looks good, and it's like unplayable. It is what it is. Uh, I'm sure at some point in the future, if I continue playing Lorcana, I will redo a video with more knowledge about gameplay uh, and strengths. But until then, I think even if you were a newbie, this might be a fun way to go through the cards with another newbie and have a look at them. So I'm not going to really explain like the basic fundamentals of Lorcana. I feel like a lot of videos do do that well and even the Lorcana, you know, the gateway box is a really good way to get into the game. It really does a good job of uh, guiding you to understand all the cards and what they do, you know. So I'm not going to say like, oh, well this is this is what willpower is and this is what strength is. And this is what lore token is. Hopefully you already know that bit so I can skip it. So, I'm going to start with Amber, which is the yellow deck. And I think it's mainly a uh, aggro deck, which means you want a lot of cards, smaller cards out on the board, getting lore as fast as you can before the other player gets their deck going. So it's kind of like a rush, a rush deck maybe. Well, not rush in that keyword way, but. So we'll go through the one ones. This is Nala, a zero four. This seems really bad to me. I don't think you really, unless you have a way to buff your cards, I don't see a, a zero four doing a lot for you besides getting one lore before it gets killed for no defensive damage. Uh, so that seems bad to me. Uh, Vanellope Von Schweetz, who I, I'm pretty sure there are shift cards for Vanellope. I see, I don't know if there's shift cards for Nala, so maybe there's shift cards. Um, I don't know all the characters that have shift cards or not. So 2-2, two, two, nothing special, pretty basic, lots of keywords, but you know, a 2-2 two -two is very basic. And that seems to be the power level for 1-1s. One right? Like a 4. 4 in stats. Daisy Duck is uninkable. Which is a downside, obviously. Uh, but a 1-4, see, that's much stronger than Nala. But Daisy has. And 2 lore, so it's like, really, just those stats are crazy compared to Nala. But uh, when Daisy quests, each opponent reveals the top card of the deck. If it's a character card, they put it put it in their hand, otherwise it's the bottom of the deck. So you might be drawing for your opponent, which is a downside. But again, this is probably a very good rush or uh, aggro card because you're getting lore to lore out so fast that it, and with like four health, when a lot of these early cards are doing one to two damage. That might be a like two turn. I mean, like Daisy probably gets you four uh, lore before they can take it off the board. And if you had two Daisies early game, you know, you might have eight lore by turn three, which would be like a huge, a huge gain. And I would imagine you kind of might, it would be such a big target. And if they don't have, uh, you know, targeted damage to take out Daisy. I can really see Daisy getting running away with it really quick, especially like if there's like a two cost bodyguard or three cost bodyguard, you put that out and they only have minions. That might be the game by like turn five. <laughs> so Daisy seems strong. Uh, Augusta Madrigal, a one, two, two, one lore, very basic. Like I can't imagine these basic cards unless they have shift targets getting played. I would imagine. Uh, got another Daisy. This is the lovely Lady Daisy. So this is just a 1-3, so nothing too special there. Again, just foreign stats. The Golden Harp. Uh, this is oh, this is a person. This is a character. Uh, at the end of a turn, if, you're, if you didn't play a song this turn, banish this character. Ooh, that's rough. 
Wait, what? That's crazy. So again, this is like the other Daisy. I won four with two lore, but like a huge downside. How can you, can you play a song that often? Surely not. That seems crazy. I, unless, I, I can't, unless you have a song deck, I guess. I guess if there's a song deck that will stay on the board for more than one turn. Okay. First aid. Remove up to one damage from each of your characters. That seems so basic. I don't know. That Like maybe if you have a high health uh, deck, that might be good. But I don't know if that's worth one card. One health to everybody? I don't think so. Uh, so this is location. Oh, let's see. Atlantica. 2-6. Characters count as having plus two cost to sing songs while here. Okay, so that makes like the character would be like two higher cost, right? Okay, so they could sing higher cost spells. So I guess there must be song decks with Amber. That seems okay. I wonder how strong that is. Again, I guess if I see loads of songs, it'll make sense about what's whether or not this like these song decks. I mean, one's usually not your songs, I guess, right? Uh, so I guess that might be good. What is got some Atlantis like? Oh, this is don't know what this says. Uh, a one two two, very basic. Kita might be a shift target though, right? So great. Pluto one zero two sounds bad. You pay one ink less for the next character you play this turn, and it's uninkable. That's interesting. That seems that seems unnecessary. So you could get Pluto out on one, and then get another one out. I mean, and then he's just a zero two. So he's just an easy kill. He's like a free kill, basically, by almost anybody. I don't think that. I don't think that's good enough. It's basically a free zero two that does one more, and takes up a card in your hand. Like, is this worth a card in your hand? I don't think so. Do you want to draw this like midway through the game? There's no way. Uh, too weak, and it's uninkable, right? So even if you draw, if you drew this on turn like five or six, it's just like great. I can throw a zero two on the board. I can't ink it. That, that's bad. It's gotta be bad. Uh, boss's orders. All right, this is an action. Chosen character gains support this turn. Support's pretty good, but I mean, this is an action. I, there's like, I know there's an item for red or blue that does this literally every turn. So to have this specific case scenario where you want to give a character support and you want to use an action for it. I can't, I can't imagine when there's such a better card that's an item that does this. Uh, this seems like not, not, seems like you wouldn't play that. Uh, remove it to three damage from location. This would be, I guess, if there's really good location decks that you want to protect. Like if there's locations that are really key to your win condition, you might want to run. Repair, you know, quick patch to heal up a location, location that gets attacked. But, you know, I've only seen one location card, so it's hard to say, but I don't know. I don't know about this one. Here's another location while we're talking about him. Neverland. Uh, what is this? It's a 1-4? Well, I don't understand. <laughs> Does this give you lore? Is it just a 1-4 location that does nothing? Like, is there just bonuses if somebody is in a location that this would make sense to exist? Because they can't do damage, right? It, take, it costs 1 to put a dude here. I'm pretty sure that's what that means. Do they just get a bonus lore? I... Okay, I don't know the mechanics well enough with locations to know if that's how that works. It might be one bonus lore. I don't know. If it's one bonus lore, I guess that's okay, but it's pretty weak. So it would be targeted, right? Because they wouldn't want you to get a bonus lore for your characters, especially at one cost. That's like not very much ink. So if that's what that means, which I'm going to guess it is. What is that other location? Does it have? No, see the other location doesn't have a lore symbol here. So that must just be the bonus. Cinder whoop, did I click the right Cinderella? Or did that just go to like the enchanted version? I don't know, I think. <laughs> Here's the enchanted version of Cinderella. Ballroom sensation. Uh, one cost, but can count as a three to sing songs. That's probably pretty good if there's some really good uh, three cost songs that you'd want to get out. That would be like a turn two cheating a mana basically, but also still having all your ink to play in another three cost card. So if you had Cinderella out on one, on two, you sing with her and you sing a three cost card that does something and then play a three cost card. That's cheating out three mana, it's playing two cards on three. So that seems good. I can imagine this getting played. Not the enchanted version. You'd, you'd have this uh, sent off for rating so that you can sell it on eBay for 500 bucks. All right, the queen, Regal Monarch one. Don't question, that's uh, just a one mana two two. That's 
fine. I'm pretty sure the queen has shift targets though, so could be a way to get uh, stronger characters out. Uh, here's the enchanted version of that. Don't need to click it. Hey, hey, boat snack support. So he gives his strength to another character. I found that to be pretty useful when I've played the practice games or like beginner games. Uh, a one, one, two, probably not strong enough compared to some of the other ones that you'd want to get out instead, uh, but not terrible. And I think Hey Hey might have shift. I'm not sure. I don't think so. Lilo, Lilo, not Lilo, Lilo, making a wish. A one, 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 uninkable with two lore. I think that's pretty good, especially for a aggro deck uh, to get some quick lore. You know, imagine you get this out with Daisy Duck and you're pumping out, you know, four to six lore per turn if they can't uh, answer it. Stitch, one, two, two. Again, pretty basic. Uh, probably a shift target. Timon, uh, a one, one, two. Tastes like chicken. When you play this character, you may move up to one damage from a chosen character. So a heal, which gives it a little bit of a bonus. I'm not sure how good healing is uh, with these characters. And I don't think yellow is a huge heal deck. I think there's another color that's more of a heal. So not sure if Timon gets played. Probably not. Control your temper. Chosen character gets negative two strength. That's fine. Probably not that great. I just feel like some of these actions, like these really low cost actions, I can't imagine they get played. You can ink it, right? But is it is this worth a card? I don't think so. Remove, uh, so a two damage, a heal here, probably not worth the card. Dingo Hopper, this is an item. Remove up to one. See, like, why would you not? <laughs> remove uh, this, this is a one card heal that stays on your board. And the only downside to items is that some characters can remove them specifically, but like, why would you run Timon, right? Um, who does a one heal and he's a one, two, like, yeah, he's a character, but there's better one ones and there's better. And then you'd have, this could literally heal every single turn, <laughs> the rest of the game. This could be worth eight to 10 heals if you have a longer game. So yeah, no. Uh, there's another Lana or Nala <laughs> just completely messing up all the names uh, and then hey hey again why are they giving me double double looks because that one's like a foil like who cares okay let's move on to twos we've got Coda a 2-1 that's not great during opponents turns you can't lose Lord there's no way that gets played like there's only certain characters and stuff that remove lore so to like tech against it with a 2-1 there's no way uh can i while this character is exerted your character's name coda can't be challenged okay so this is a, like a specific bodyguard just for coda to protect this pointless uh power of denying uh, the, the opponent from taking your lore off of you there's no way otherwise it's a one four like that's probably not great not great there's no way uh here's a lilo not not a shift though um and this is just a support a one three see it's just it's a it's got four stats it costs two and it's just that's it's it's just a support that seems weak here's a vanellope another vanellope the candy mechanic one You've got to pay to play. When this character quests, chosen opponents get negative one uh, strength until the next start of your next turn. That seems okay. I mean, there's like, this is the next, like one more cost and it has, you know, a decent power. And that's certainly better than a one mana two two that does nothing to have a two two that does a little bit more, but probably still pretty weak. This seems like maybe a, a bit more of an anti-aggro card, which I don't know. Maybe that's good in like a mirror if you're both doing aggro so that you can bash uh, all their players and take less damage. I don't know. That seems a bit weak to me. We've got Fix It Felix Jr., the delighted sightseer. Oh, he's having a great time. Oh, my land. When you play this character, if you have a location in play, draw a card. That seems good. Um, I've only seen two locations so far for one cost, uh, and neither of them seemed amazing, but this may might make sense for you to have one a quick draw on a three or a two rather and then have that location that buffs lore you know you can move him to it in the next turn 
uh, might be good. You know, drawing cards are is a good thing to do. So I can imagine a location deck will probably definitely have Felix in it. Invited to the ball. Reveal the top two cards of your deck. Put revealed character cards into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your deck in any order. Uninkable, but two cost for po probably two cards, especially if you're running a character heavy deck. Seems pretty good. Uh, I can imagine this card getting run. Um, you know, quick draw too. Especially if you have an aggro deck, you're probably mostly characters, right? So that would be a quick two. I mean, two cost. We'll see how much um, card draw costs, but two for two. I think in Hearthstone that would be really good. So I'm going to guess that it's pretty good. Uh, healing Decanter. Renewing Essence. Remove up to two damage from... Okay, so this is a two heal. So this is really good. You know that we had the, the fork or whatever was a one cost one heal. This is a two cost two heal. So that seems really good too. So I don't know, especially if there's item synergy in this deck, I can imagine this doing really well with a lot of characters, especially if you want to do trades and stuff to heal your guys back up after the trades. It seems all right. If healing is a good thing to do in Lorcana, this seems like a decent item. And if you can like cheat out items quick, you know, that seems like a good target. Uh, another item, Queen's Sensor Core. Symbol of nobility. At the start of your turn, if you have a princess or queen character in play, gain one lore. That seems real good, right? Royal search. So you can pay two ink. Reveal the top card of your deck. If it's a princess or queen character card, you may put it into your hand. Otherwise, put it on the top of your deck. Okay. This seems really good. Especially if you're playing a deck that has loads of princesses or queens in it. You're either gaining lore. Oh, and it's not even like exert it to do that. It's, not, it's both of these if you want. So that could be like a one lore literally every time, just having this item on board. And if you have loads of princesses or queens, you might be paying, see, okay, you're paying two ink to get maybe one card, maybe not any cards. So maybe later game when you have a lot of uh, ink to use, this might work all right. You might not really care about that two cost, but early game, you're definitely probably not paying, paying that. Uh, so that seems good though, one lore a turn. Yeah, seems all right. Amber Chromacon, remove up to one damage from each of your characters. All right, so that's even better than that. You know, some of the <laughs> had an action that does that, right? So yeah, items, unless people are running loads of like anti-item tech, these items seem to be pretty solid for heals anyway. All right, we've got another uh, location, a 1-8. That's huge. loads of uh, health and characters get plus three to their defense or uh, willpower here. That seems good. If uh, locations get played, that seems pretty solid, especially if you've got bodyguard characters and then also location synergies. I can imagine this being played. I guess we'll find out. Mirabelle Madrigal Prophecy Finder, uh, a 2-2 two -two that does support, so you'll be giving two damage to another character. That might be good in a aggro deck for like easier clears with your smaller characters. I mean, she's pretty small, but you know, you can buff up a 1-1 one, one to make it a 3-1 real quick to do some damage. Got another stitch, just a 2-3. That's okay. Nothing special. Ursula, 2 and a 1-4, and she can sing 4 cost spells. So probably pretty good if you've got a spell deck, or a song deck rather. If you don't have a song deck, you're probably not bothering, but that could be a good way to get a early 4 cost song into play. Bruno's return, an action. Return a character card from your discard to your hand. Then remove up to two damage. Oh, so a heal and bounce a character from your discard pile back into your hand for two. Unankable though, so I don't know. I don't know about that one. Maybe. Depends on how, how fast the game is going. Because otherwise you're basically healing for two, which is okay. Not like amazing, right? And then getting a card back in your hand. It could be worse. Um, I guess it, if it was a three inkable, it would probably be like, no, but like a two uninkable, you're like, maybe, uh, I'd be surprised. I, I don't think this probably gets played without huge cards that you want to bounce back. Miracle candle, an item, banish this item. If you have three or more characters in play, gain two lore, or move up to two damage from a chosen location. That's like so many things happening here. So you need three. There's no way. There's no way. Unless you're playing a massive um, aggro deck that you're going to have loads of characters out. 
that you need at least three just to get two lore and just to heal a location. So maybe in a very location heavy deck, you'd want to play this. A not only a location heavy deck, but one that's going to have lots of characters reliably in play. Otherwise, it's a dead card. So that seems iffy. Record player item. Look at this. Whenever you play a song, chosen character gets negative two strength until the start of your next turn. So that would go good in a song heavy deck. And your character's name Stitch count as having plus one to cost to sing songs. Well, okay. I guess if you had loads of stitches, this would make sense too. Uh, it's probably too weak to play. Because again, this only works when you play a song. So otherwise, it's just sitting there. So, and then it just does one thing, right? No way. Not getting played. The Underworld, River Styx, save a soul whenever a character quests while well, here you may pay three ink to return a character card from your disc hand to discard to your hand. That's interesting. That seems good. And it has one lore, is this what, if, that, if that's what that means, which I've decided that's what that means, so I've, I've written it into the rules. I have manifested it, if it wasn't already a reality. This seems, oh, it doesn't seem good. Three is pretty high, so this is maybe a later game. Uh, can you move? A, I don't know if you can move somebody to a location immediately. I guess you could, right? The same turn. Play it. Play two to move somebody there. Quest with them. Pay another three and get uh, a card in hand. I can imagine that happening. It seems like a, a pretty good location compared to some of these other locations. So it's only a two cost. Yeah, I can imagine. Uh, Dalmatian Puppy Tail Wagger, where do they all come from? You may have up to 99 copies of Dalmatian Puppy Tail Wagger in your deck. Okay. How much does this one cost? It costs 54 cents each. You can have 99 of those. So, what's the point? <laughs> like, a, like a joke? A meme deck? You show up with 100 cards? If you like show up with like 100 cards, like the other person knows what your deck is before you play one, right? Otherwise you'd be like, uh, you can't play that. <laughs> like, why do you have that many cards? All right, so that seems like, okay, all of the Dalmatian, oh wait, they're all different card art. Okay, that's a two three. They're all two threes, they're all the same thing. So that that's a fun meme deck, I guess. Maybe there's some crazy synergy with Dalmatian puppies that make it, if you've brought 99 copies of a Dalmatian puppy, then you get plus one to lore to all your puppies or something. Okay, Minnie Mouse, musical artist, singer three. She counts as three to sing. Whenever you play a character with bodyguard, you may remove up to two damage from chosen character. Okay, so that's kind of interesting. She does damage once you play a bodyguard, but she doesn't really seem like a card you'd protect with bodyguard, right? So, I don't know. Probably not played, even if it is singer three. That's not super strong. A singer four as a two cost. That seems okay. Again, if you... I think there was some ones earlier that were probably better than this. Well, I don't know. I think that Ursula was a singer four, right? A two cost. And was like a one four. So again, this is just kind of similar. I guess it depends on what's better, a two two or a one four on two. Or if it doesn't matter because you wouldn't play any of these low cost singers. Again, you kind of have to look at all the songs and whether or not you're looking to play a four cost song. Uh, you know, on turn three. Uh, a two mana, one four, that doesn't do anything. I, why? W why would you play this? Like, isn't Ursula? <laughs> Ursula is a two mana, one four with one lore that actually has a bonus, can sing a four cost song. This dude's the same, but he can't do anything. Why does this card exist? You wouldn't, you wouldn't get, you wouldn't play this. Uh, two, two, Piglet. While you have two or more other characters, this character gets plus two lore all right that's pretty good especially for an aggro deck i can imagine this being being in there to be able to get a three lore character that that early so again a two i think two lore characters are pretty good especially early game especially early game aggro decks so i can imagine this also probably getting played and i think windy has synergy with uh, other characters like if there's a windy on board blah 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 bare necessities a character with cost two or more can sing the song oh, okay so this is a song is this the first song we've seen? Chosen opponent reveals their hand and discards a non-character card. That's fun. Oh, I love the I love cards like that. I love forcing discards and stuff. 
I think that's good. Getting a card out of their hand for two, you can always ink it, but you probably wouldn't. And plus you can play this for free with a lot of characters, right? A two cost character, that's nothing. Uh, I like that. I can imagine playing that a lot. Cleansing Rainwater, oh, is this from Milan? I'd imagine, it's a Chinese looking character. There's only like one Chinese Disney movie. Banish this item, remove up to two damage from ancient characters. I can't imagine. A two heal for one card for everything. Nah. When, you know, you, you haven't... Okay, well, this isn't the same thing. I don't know. I'm, I'm like already getting mad about it, but... Remove two damage from a location with an item. Maybe? Seems a bit weak. I don't... You know, you have... You're going to have location cards and item cards to repair your locations. It's almost like, well, I need character cards more than just repairing and playing location cards, right? So, I don't think you would, you would have this. You might have, like, a much stronger location healing card but even then i doubt it you probably just let your locations get wrecked if they do and just soak up the damage that they soak up pride lands two seven well two to play here something here seven it's two uninkable i get two willpower wall here if you have a prince or king character you pay one ink less to play characters one ink less to play characters maybe maybe it's a bit of a big cost to just to move a character there just to get two extra willpower. I feel like. I think maybe this is... I mean, I guess they do get one more lore. Is the one ink less to play characters good enough? <laughs> Might be. It's an interesting card. It is a 2-7. It's pretty strong, right? Uh, oh, that's a second pride land. It's just a fancier enchanted one. Grand Duke, Advisor of the King. Your Prince, Princess, King, and Queen characters get one extra strength. That might be okay in a heavy prince, princess, king, queen character deck. Might be okay. Probably not. I doubt this gets played. Nana, darling family pets, uh, two mana, not two mana, two ink. Whenever you play a floodborne character, remove all damage from a chosen character. That's interesting. That'd be really good at like later, maybe like later game when you're, you know, healing up uh, something. But I guess, let's see. You'd have to have this on board, and then you'd have to play a Floodborne character to remove damage, right? So, really depends on your deck build, but probably doesn't happen. It seems like like a situational sort of card, and sometimes those sort of situational cards where the situation doesn't arise that it makes it a good play, then it's a wasted card in your hand, right? You might be like, not have a Floodborne for two or three turns when you could have really used one. So, probably not getting played. Rapunzel, remove up to 2 damage from a chosen character. Just a heal? A 2-4 heal? I don't think so. I mean, it is it is a character, not like an item. But I feel like those healing items are much much better than these characters that heal. And it is like an exert to heal. Which, I don't that almost makes it worse. <laughs> so you're not doing anything else with her but healing for 2. I, I doubt that gets played. Uh, Sleepy... This character enters play exerted. Ah, that seems bad. It seems like it's going to get wrecked because um, it is a two lore, so it would be a, more of a target on its back. Sneezy. Whenever you play this character or another Seven Dwarfs character, you may give chosen character negative one strength this turn. Seems like it doesn't get played unless you just have a, a meme dwarf deck. Snow White, Lost in the Forest. When you play this character, you may remove up to two damage, so another heal, a two, three heal. I just don't think these healing cards are going to be it. Uh, Snow White Unexpected House Guess. You pay one ink less to play seven dwarfs characters. So that might be the synergy you want uh, if you want to build a dwarf deck so that you can get more characters out on board fast, uh, assuming you have them all in your hand, uh, whatever. Uh, probably not strong enough synergy. I guess we'll see the other seven dwarfs. Maybe like they really bounce off of each other but like this one that bonus isn't amazing an action or a heal for four for two four is a decent amount but probably not good enough here's an action banish chosen character who was challenged this turn for two uninkable i doubt that gets played you'd have to for one you'd have to attack something attack a character with one of your characters and then play this so you're already probably not winning a fight right or at least just doing damage with a character and then you have to play this that seems not great 
Painting the Roses Red, a character with a costume. Okay, it's a song. Up to two chosen characters get negative one strength this turn. Draw a card. Drawing a card's good. The negative strength for two is okay. Probably not super worth it. I feel like a lot of these yellow or amber cards are lower strength and heal your own characters. So maybe it's less of an aggro deck and more of a uh, anti-aggro deck, right? Because you want to be like bashing into characters, taking their strength away while you bash them so you don't take as much damage and then healing yourself if you do take damage, like you take one or two instead of, th you know, two or three. And then healing. So, you know, it's inkable and it can draw you a card. So, you know, late game, it's almost not that big of a deal because you are getting another card and you might be weakening, weakening the, the opponent's board a little bit, but might be too weak of a card to get played. Zero to hero. This is a song. Count the number of characters you have in play. You pay that amount of ink less for the next character you play this turn. Okay, so that's a pretty good... Man, that could be... If you are playing a deck that gets loads of characters out there and you play this and you have a large character in your card, that could be a huge mana cheat. But again, this is a situational card and it's uninkable. So if you miss, you're like holding a card that you don't do anything with. Um, I mean, you can always sing it, right? But again, it could be a card that does nothing at all the entire game. And those cards are pretty risky. So this seems a bit high rolly, which could be good. But if you also have a deck, and again, it seems like Amber does, like I was saying, that Amber de deck does seem to want to have characters on board. This might be a this might be a good swing card. It's, it's hard to say. This might be good, it might be bad. If it was inkable, it'd be good. Uh, even an inkable three, maybe, would probably be good. But on un inkable cards, you know, they, they, they have that risk of sticking with you forever. Sleepy Flute, uh, not gonna say anything about that image. If you played a song this turn, gain one lore. That seems good. Again, I think there's there's song synergy cards. So, you know, if, if the songs are strong and you have this out there, you're just getting lore for them. Uh, I can imagine this getting played pretty often, especially in a song deck, right? You could, I mean, you can have four, right? That could be four <laughs> if you somehow got all your items down. This could be for learn lore. For lore sounds like an Abraham Lincoln speech. You could get four lore per turn, right? Assuming that that you high rolled all that and were able to get them down without losing the game. Again, that seems good. LeFou Bumbler. If you have a character named Gaston in play, you pay one less ink to play this character. That's pro. I mean, in a Gaston, <laughs> Gaston, Gaston, Gaston deck, this is good. Obviously. Uh, two mana, one two, which isn't super strong, but two lore, and it might cost one. Have we seen a Gaston yet? So, like, what cards, what ink level is he? Is he a three or a four? Because then you're kind of just getting a one, like a cheaper two drop out. So maybe it's not as good, just because he's so weak. I don't know. If there was a one mana Gaston, which I don't think I've seen a Gaston, right? there was a one or two mana Gaston then this would make a lot this would be stronger because you would be getting you know two low cost cards out early game that's what you want to do to fill the board and get that lore going but if you're not playing a Gaston till three or four then you might be holding on to this card and not getting its bonus that makes it the makes its cost make sense because there's one or two mana's cards that give you two lore already right I mean certainly two mana cards yeah I don't know maybe not good maybe not good Mini Mouse, uh, two, two, three, meh, not, not going to get played unless you want your princess cards and your Mini Mouse cards for shifting, I'm guessing. Uh, Sebastian, he can sing a four, two mana, two, two, sings a four. See, that seems good. Where was that, <laughs> where was that one? Where was that stupid card? Get out of here, Orville. <laughs> You're just a one four. Get out. Nobody wants you here. Simba, two, two, he's a bodyguard. I mean, this is the first bodyguard we've seen, so... A 2 mana 2-3 bodyguard might be good in a deck where you're trying to protect your daisy. Yeah, I can imagine a daisy turn 1, Simba turn 2 being a very difficult play for some characters to get through if they don't have a, a 3 damage card, right? So he could protect daisy um, and some of your other low cost cards right off the bat. Uh, and plus it's inkable so it's fine if you, get, you, know, if you need to just get rid of him if you don't have that play. So, seems good in a deck that wants to protect your low-cost cards. And there was that, there was that 
location that boosts uh, bodyguard health, right? Was it two or three? So, you know, turn three, maybe you put a, the location down, put symbol on there. Now he's a two, five, two, six, whatever it was. I can imagine that being very difficult to deal with early game. Be our guest. Look at the top four cards of your deck. You may reveal a character card and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom. Okay, so this is a song. Draw a card, basically, because you're, you're going to have a character card in your top four cards, right? If you're singing it, that's a free draw, right? Just to exert a character for two, you're going to have... That's not going to be a problem. <laughs> you're always going to have, like, a two-cost card out there. So, a free? Yeah, I can see this getting played. It's not, it's not amazing, but you are also looking at four cards and it's not even just like draw a card. You are drawing one, you are getting to pick from four cards so you can look and pick the strongest card for your, your strategy at that time. I can imagine this being run pretty often, especially in a song deck. A lantern item, you pay one ink less for the next character you play this turn. Seems good. Yeah, I can imagine that getting played. Well, we had a, there was another card that was like a character did that, right? Uh, I mean, like, you know, like Snow White, you pay one less for seven dwarf characters. You have Snow White out there. You have Lantern out there. You're, you're pumping dwarfs out like you wouldn't believe. Just can't keep them off the deck. Um, okay, we got our threes. We'll start with Felix here. Fix it, Felix, the trusty builder. He's a bodyguard, 2-4. A little bit better than Simba. That's only one health more than Simba for a whole nother ink? That seems a bit weak, right? I would think that it'd be like a 2-5, uh, but it's not. So I don't know. I, I feel like Simba is stronger here. Is 4 really that much of a, a difference maker in these? We'll see what the other cards say. Uh, Gazelle, Popstar, can sing for 5. 2-3, two, 2 lore? It's not bad. It's pretty good, especially if a song deck, I think. Uh, two, three, that can, you know, two lore is good. And if you can play this, I guess if you're playing a song, you're not getting that two lore, but, you know, maybe there's a really good five cost song out there. Moana is a three, four, so uninkable, but a bit more of a stronger uh, card for three, four. I think a three mana three, four without two lore is kind of, is maybe like the standard for a three cost inkable. So making it uninkable just to have one extra lore might be too much of a cost. It's not a terrible card to play just at any point in time, I suppose. Uh, but I don't know. That's a niffy one. That's a maybe, I guess. Healing touch. Remove up to four damage from a chosen character and draw a card. Probably not getting played. The, I don't think these heals are just that strong. And and like, who are you healing? You know, if you're playing like a, a bit, a lot of minion, if you're playing it, like it seems like this deck wants to play or Amber wants to play lots of minions. And well, if you're playing lots of minions, you're not playing lots of big minions. So you're, are you healing characters for four? And I mean, drawing your cards, okay, but you know, is that, are you getting, is this heal worth it? That's what I'm wondering. Here's another Pride Lands, a Jungle Oasis. While you have three or more characters, you may banish this location to play a character from your discard for free. Huh. To play a character from your discard for free. Okay, interesting. So this is, I think at its basis, you have a move a character here for two and get a lore. And then, you know, if you, again, if you do have lots of cards on and play, you could get a big character and just throw them right back into play from your discard. And I guess if your location was like at threat and like maybe they put like six damage on it, right? And you're like, oh, well, I've got three characters. Oh, you have to have three characters in the location. And so they have to be here. That seems like a lot. You'd already, So you'd have to have all the characters in play enough and like ready, right? And then you move them. Can you move characters that are just you just played into the location? I think you can. But that would be a lot of ink. It seems like if you can pull it off, it would be good. But it seems like a big investment. And it seems, and then you, and you'd want to have something in your discard worth. I mean, almost any card is worth it, right? It's free. It could be like a, it could be a really huge swing, I guess. Uh, I just feel like this is more of almost like a ramp aggro. <laughs> I don't know. 
This seems tough. This seems like it might be a tough card to pull off. I don't know about that one. Alma Madrigal, the family matriarch. Uh, uninkable. When you play this character, you may search your deck for a Madrigal character card and reveal that card to all players. Shuffle your deck and put that card on top of it. I don't know. I don't know. I guess I'll have to see all of the Madrigal cards to be like, oh, you definitely want to have this one ready to go on your next card draw. And then your opponent gets to see which one it is. Why? <laughs> Why do they get to see which one it is? Ugh, I don't think so, man. I don't know. Maybe. that's This is conditional on how those Madrigal family cards are. For an uninkable, I mean, a 1-3 with two lore is okay. Right, she'll get you two lore, and then somebody will bash her and kill her. So, is this action worth it? Maybe, maybe not. Interesting card. Donald Duck, the Musketeer Soldier. He's a bodyguard for two, three, for three. What, what? What's your bonus? When you play this character, chosen character gets plus one this turn. So he's kind of like uh, play a bodyguard for two, three, get one extra lore for one turn. I don't think so. I don't think so. Maybe. I don't know. I feel like that Simba at 2 is a little bit better. But it's inkable. It might be worth it. It seems a bit weak. Here's Felix Madrigal. You could draw him with that lady. Uh, he's just a 2-4 with 2 lore. That's pretty decent though. For a 3. He's got some high health, so he's not an easy kill. Might be a good card. You might see that one get played. But I mean, again, he doesn't have anything really going on. So if there's a better 2-4 with 2 lore for 3 that actually has a a decent action then you wouldn't see this guy ever here's our first guest on uh, he's uninkable dubious recruitment when you exert him you pay two ink less for the next character you play this turn that's that's interesting so he could be a way to get some characters out way to get bodyguards out to continue to protect him to cheat mana or cheat ink rather and cheating ink is a good thing to do yeah it might be all right might be all right i haven't seen tons of cheating ink cards for yellow here yet so it doesn't seem like that would be like your main game plan but he's uninkable you know that sometimes that's it's not a bad card i guess you could always it almost almost pays for itself right when you get that next character out especially like the play after this right you could be you play a three right turn four you ink something you exert him and you get a six out that can be a huge play so i can i can imagine gaston getting uh getting played a lot just to get that get that six out two turns early that could be brutal here's another madrigal julieta madrigal the excellent cook when you play this character you may remove up to two damage from a chosen character if you remove damage this way you may draw a card all right that's good that's good right so it's only it only costs three and if you can heal somebody you get a card so it's a bit conditional i mean you can set up the need to heal something a lot of the time so i can imagine this being a reliable card draw and reliable card draw is a good thing so uh in an aggro deck i can imagine an aggro deck with minions that can take a hit you know your bodyguards and stuff i can imagine this getting played max loyal sheepdog for three if you have a character named Prince Eric in play, you pay one ink less. Have we we haven't seen a Prince Prince Eric, so this could be a discounted card. Assuming you got Prince Eric out there, uh, a three mana four three is not bad. It's at least going to be. This is like the first four damage card we've seen for strength. So, you know, with some of these one four cards that we've seen, uh, it doesn't seem like an amber deck would be able to one hit them until turn three so you can imagine that daisy duck being tough for the the mirror match if you don't have you know max who can you know this is the only one character so far that's been able to be able to take care of it itself oh here's prince eric's right next to him and he's a bodyguard so you could play prince eric and, and get max out a little bit cheaper on the next turn if you like um or you could play prince eric if you had gaston on board you play prince eric use gaston's a bear ability and now you've got a 3-3 three, three, and a 4-3 out on the exact same turn because uh, max would be free at that point so because you know you get a little bit of synergy you know turn four 
you still have one ink left, or you can ink another one and have. Uh, no, you wouldn't ink on that. Well, you know what I mean. I can see. I can see that sort of stuff happening. Is it good enough? Just Prince Eric and. Oh, I'm lagging out now. Just Prince Eric and. You know, a 3 3 and a 4 3. I don't know. Probably not. Probably not worth uh, bothering with. Because you kind of don't want your bodyguards to have low health. Like 3 damage? He's not really. He's just taking a hit. And then he's dead, right? He's not like taking two hits. All right, action, sign the scroll. Each opponent may choose and discard a card. For each opponent who doesn't, you gain two lore. So this could be a three mana, get two lore if your opponent does, doesn't discard, which they probably wouldn't. So this might just be a three mana uninkable, gain two lore. I don't think that's going to get played. <laughs> A Baloo, he's a bodyguard. He's a 0-3 bodyguard. When this character is banished, gain 2 lore. I don't know. Is that good enough? He's uninkable, but you you probably would play him. So I feel like the ink doesn't even matter because you probably, if you're putting this guy in your deck, you just want to play him because you want that lore. And so, you know, he would quest for one, and then he'd die, and then he'd get two. So it's basically like playing 3 mana for 3 lore. Is that worth it? I'm not sure. Maybe. If you had all four of them, you'd get 12 lore just off of Baloo. So, maybe. Pongo, Determined, determined Father. Once per turn, you may pay 2 ink to reveal the top card of your deck. If it's a character card, put it into your hand. Otherwise, put it on the bottom. Okay, we've seen one of these like this before. And if you're running a character-heavy deck, which... Probably most decks are character-heavy anyway. Unless you're playing a, a song deck, like, right? This wouldn't be in your song deck. But if you're playing a character deck, I think you would definitely do this. And it's not even an exert, right? You can just do it. So this could be a, a pay to ink to draw a card. That's probably fine. That's probably good. Probably good enough. And if you're playing like a dog deck for funsies, then you definitely have Pongo in there anyway. And that'll get one of your 99 Dalmatians that you've loaded into your deck. Queen of Hearts, Wonderland Empress. Whenever this character quests, your other villain characters get one lore this turn. Alright, so this is a villain deck thing, right? So I haven't really been, like, reading the subtitles, but I guess you know who the villains are in Disney, for the most part. Yeah. A villain deck, this seems good. That's going to really boost your uh, lore output if you've got loads of other villains on board. But if, you, if there's not a lot of support for a villain deck, this would be bad, right? So... I feel like we see more heroes than we see villains, but I'm not totally sure of the ratios here. Raleigh, a hungry pup. Uh, whenever, oh, so this is a support. He's pretty strong, right? So if you quested with this dude, you put his strength on, you know, a weaker card and then let them challenge somebody. You could do some damage. I just, I don't think these support characters are strong enough to do. To be in your deck, though, if I had to guess, uh, because again, they're situational cards rather than having strength themselves in a way. Like he's a support character. Well, you might not have another guy to support, which would make his power, his strength, a bit useless. Three cost song, heal what has been hurt. Uh, heal for three, draw a card. That's if heals a good thing, then this is good because at least you draw a card too. And you can sing it. Uh, if heals aren't worth it, and I, I just don't know if they are, <laughs> then this probably doesn't get a lot of play. Got another location. Uh, so it's three, uninkable. Characters can't be challenged while here. That's... So this is almost like a bodyguard card in a way that's going to give you a bonus lore and protect cards uh, that you want protected. So if you had, you know, your daisy still alive... Or another two lore card you'd really be buffing them and this would be taking eight damage before they could even be challenged themselves it's uninkable but if you're running this you're probably playing it so for locations this seems all right you know it's a three cost bodyguard but it's more like a five cost bodyguard right because you're still gonna have to play to move somebody there so that makes it a bit expensive um, Kind of in a way you're like paying two, two ink to add eight willpower to a character. 
I mean, my, you're kind of paying five ink to add two willpower to a character, or eight willpower to a character. That might be worth it. That might be worth it. Yeah, I don't know. Locations are a bit hard to read right now. Uh, got Doc. Uh, whenever this character quests, you pay one ink less for the next character you play this turn. That seems all right. Especially if you're playing a dwarf deck because they've already got some cheaper... You know, if you have Snow White out there, you have Doc out there, that would be like two less ink for some of these dwarf characters. So you could try to fill the board, right? Might be all right. Oh, uh, dopey. When this character is banished, your other seven dwarfs character get plus two strength until your next turn. So yeah, you could really put some some power out there uh, if you have him challenge first, if there's a board to clear. So the dwarfs might be a bit of an anti-aggro deck if you can get the, that synergy out there. That might be asking a lot for that synergy to all come into play perfectly for you, but they're trying. They're trying to work together. Uh, here's another Gaston. So that's two two Gastons at three. Uh, this one's a Singer. Sing a five. A three three. That's, that's good in a song deck, right? It might not be uh, amazing. Stats. I think that 3-3 three, three stat line can get battered by the 3-4s that kind of show up a lot of the time. But if you did want to get a 5 cost song out earlier, that could be pretty good. A Milan is a support, a 2-3 support, at least has 2 lore, so you will like almost always be giving somebody 2 extra strength because you want to be loring with or questing with Milan, so it might be okay, but a bit basic, right? Kind of just a... 2-3. Pretty weak. Pretty weak at this stage of the game. Your, your turn 3s and 4s. Piglet, a 2-4. So similar to Milan. A little bit stronger. So it can probably more likely to take a hit. But again, unless you just want these lore cards to be pumped out as quick as you can, uh, I, I think it's a bit weak at this stage. But again, if you're like playing like 1-2-3 and you're always just like aiming to get these 2 lore cards to just get them out lore get them out lore quest get them out quest get them out quest to just like a race to the end then they might be strong enough and if you know they can take a hit or two even better like i don't think milan can take a hit though <laughs> she's probably dead in one piglet might be able to take at least one hit here or at least trade have to have to have two people challenge got a song world's greatest criminal mind banish chosen character with five strength or more that's probably pretty pretty all right and it's inkable if you don't need to use it that could be a pretty good swing right so they play a big card you sing and you could probably sing with a, a, a three cost card and just take that dude right off the board you know that could be like a four or five or six cost with that sort of strength but again it's situational but at least it's not uninkable so if the situation isn't there you just ink it right if, if you drew this on one you just ink it it's fine but otherwise, it seems like a pretty strong anti-character card. Dragon Gym, bring back to life. You exert it, and it costs three ink. And you return a character card with support from your discard to your hand. Maybe, maybe, if you would definitely, you know, if you're having those cards in your in your discard, if you're playing those support characters. And there's probably some support characters that are just strong enough without that support. That you'd be playing them so but it's a three ink cost so late game this is less of a big deal but early game you probably you definitely don't want this in your hand yeah i can imagine this being run in a more of a control deck so that you have time to get to this point where spending this ink isn't a massive deal yeah i guess that seems all right getting cards in your hand is good especially getting cards that you're specifically wanting to get into your hand is even better. Ariel, a singer five for three, and two three, but weak, let's see. When you play this character, look at the top four cards of the deck, you re reveal a song, put, okay, so that's why it's good. <laughs> so not only can she sing, but she can, you can uh, search for your, uh, a strong song. You're almost setting up that song, right? Assuming it's in the top four. So I can imagine this being good. And plus if it, it's not, like, you're thinning your deck a little bit, or at least seeing what your cards are and then putting them at the bottom of the deck. So hopefully you don't like shuffle your uh, 
put good cards at the bottom of your deck that you wanted if you don't find a song. But in a song deck, right, like this is this is huge. Uh, it, would pro it would be 100% played no matter what in song decks because you're going to have enough songs that you're going to hit your songs in that in that draw and then you're going to be set up to sing them. Maximus, a 3-3. Three, three. When you play this character, chosen character gets negative 2 strength this turn. That's fine. It's nothing great. Yeah, that's probably not played. Mickey Mouse, true friend. Uh, he's a 3-3-3 three, three, three that has 2 lore. That's kind of basic. Again, it's just another card that you're, that's kind of like similar to... Wait, didn't Mulan have like... No, she was a 2-3. Never mind. Um, yeah, just a 3-3 three, three with 2 lore. That's... I'd probably rather have Piglet, right? At least Piglet can take another hit with one, that one extra health. So, I don't know. Probably not played. Mr. Smee, loyal first mate. A 2 5 1 lore. That's not good enough, man. Mr. Smee, come on. Step it up. Just in time action. You may play a character with cost 5 or less for free. Um, you might be cheating mana out here. Or you might kind of get stuck with a card that doesn't really do that much. 5 or less. If you're not getting a 5 cost card out with this card, it's, it's bad. Because even cheating out like one mana is okay. So for a four cost card, but is that worth a card in your hand? I'm not sure. So this this needs to have get those five cost cards out. Now if you start your hand with like this in your hand and a five cost card, you know, for your first draw, then like yeah, I can imagine that being a pretty strong play. I can imagine this getting played, honestly. You're probably more likely to have success with this card than not having success, than constantly whiffing. And if you are, even if you're constantly whiffing in a way, then like you're probably just drawing really bad anyway. <laughs> so it might not be even this card's fault at that point. It might just be a bad draw. Part of your world. This is a song. Return a character card from your discard to hand. That's strong, surely. Some of these cards were like, find a support character but this is just any song this is just any card or it's any character card obviously but like yeah i can imagine like certainly late game you you would love this right that'd be like oh let me get my strongest card back out or one i can instantly play right now and have an impact on the game that i've uh had to discard uh seems strong to me especially in a song not even in a song deck this seems stronger in a character deck just to get your cards back in your hand. Ursula's Shell Necklace. Now sing. Whenever you play a song, you may pay one ink to draw a card. Oh, definitely going in a song deck. Probably in any deck. Card draw for nothing? For one, actually? <laughs> By nothing, I mean one. So, yeah. One ink to draw a card when you play a song. You're probably playing uh, certainly a handful of songs in, your, in these decks. They seem pretty decent. I can imagine this getting played a lot in a lot of decks. Any deck that has songs in it, maybe. Enough songs that, you know, like maybe like eight, eight to ten at least, maybe? You would probably want to have this. That could be potentially eight, you know, eight cards. Uh, seems good. Seems good. And that's all our three so far. All right. We have got on the four cost cards, we have Prince Naveen's Enchanted, uh, the ukulele player card. Singer six, so he's a four cost, uninkable, and he can sing for sixes. And it said, it's beautiful. No, when you play this character, you may play a song with six, cost six or less for free. That's good, right? Uh, two lore, it's got low stats, kinda. But obviously playing a six cost song for free right away without even having to exert him seems really good, especially if you've got a good six cost song so i can imagine prince naveen being a pretty good card maybe like one of the better cards that we've seen so far so yeah i'd imagine this guy gets played rut northern moose support uh just support three four for four probably not good enough i don't think support's good enough um toque northern moose four 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 just plain stats. I mean, it's a 4-4, four, four, but that's probably the average, right? Are we going to, our four cost is probably going to be 
eight worth of stats. So this seems like a very basic card I'm imagining. It's the first shift we've seen. Uh, so Vanellope uh, becomes a 2-4, and I think her other cards are two two twos. So you're basically just getting two uh, willpower plus uh, two lore, which is good. But I think maybe her 2-2 two, two might have a two lore. I'm not sure. Uh, I hereby decree, whenever you play another princess character, all opposing characters get negative one to strength until your next turn. So, again, one of those sort of weakening cards, which probably isn't strong enough to run the Vanellope package, if this is the payoff of boosting your character by two willpower and one lore, maybe, and then having kind of a weak power doesn't seem that good to me. Alan Adele, Rock and Rooster, a 2-3 at 4. Whenever you play a song, gain one lore. All right, so that's his perk. And that's probably pretty good if you've got a song deck and he is a 2 lore. So you might get 3 lore off of him, honestly. Because does he stay on the board that long? If you know that they have a, a song deck, you might get... Uh, he's definitely going to get targeted, right? So I can't imagine him getting you more than three lore before he gets killed, <laughs> or uh, banished rather. Maybe a bit weak. Sven, Reindeer Steed. Uh, he's a 3-3, three, three, two lore. Reindeer games, when you place character, you may ready chosen character. They can't quest or challenge for the rest of this turn. What, what would they do? So they could still exert for, say, singing a song or something. They just can't quest or challenge. I guess that's what the advantage of is this of this would be. Otherwise, he's okay stats, only six, but too lore, right? So I don't know. I feel like he must have a play in mind with Sven, and it must be singing, right? Or doing or an exertion of some sort that would be somebody's power that is worth Sven being in there. But again, that seems real situational, so... Maybe not, but maybe in a very specific deck where you want somebody that can just do something other than ch quest or challenge. All right, for Minnie Mouse, compassionate friend. Uh, that looked like, like a volcano or something happening behind her. I guess it's ink. I don't know what's happening. Uh, she's a 1-5, two lore. Patch them up. One of this character quest, you may remove. Okay, so she heals one character when she quests. That's not bad for some of these heals. Again, it's a four mana, one five. So she's not really going to be challenging anybody. And she might take two hits without giving back that much damage. I, could you heal yourself with this? I suppose so. It doesn't say you can't. another character. It just says chosen character. So maybe that gives many a bit more survivability. But not sure this gets played. I don't know if the heal package is strong enough. To get played anyway. So we got a song. <clears throat> Remove up to three damage from chosen. Okay, so heal three and ready them. They can't. Okay, so they can't quest or challenge for the rest of this turn. So again, this just ready somebody. So I guess that would be a good way to make them safe, right? That's another thing you can do if they're ready. Like they can't re. You can like play, make them quest, and then play this and ready them so that they're safe. So it could be a way to protect a strong character. Is that worth a song card? Because you want to heal somebody? Probably not. So I don't think that would be useful. And if we look back at Sven, who can do that same thing, but is a character and can then lore, him, you know, gain lore himself and also protect, you know, a character by readying them. It makes way more sense to run Sven than this card that just heals and does that right like big what if you don't need to heal anybody this is almost a wasted card you're just literally waiting to heal somebody if you have this card um is that the same one yeah that's just the enchanted card for vanellope i've uh, got an ariel singing mermaid uh, a singer seven so she could cheat out a very high cost song here is that good enough probably right there's probably a very good seven cost song otherwise her stats are kind of standard this three three with two lore seems to be a bit standard for 
that Cogsworth with a it's like a weapon. Um, Major Major Domo, is this from something besides Beauty and the Beast? As you were, or whenever this character quests, you may give chosen character neighbor two strength. Probably not getting played. I don't think these uh, strength de-strengthing cards are strong. If I had to guess, that's usually not that strong of a play in other card games that I've played. So I'm guessing you wouldn't play this over some of these other cards we've seen at four. Here's another Daisy Duck, a Musketeer Spy. When you play this card as character, each opponent chooses and discards a card. Ooh, good. So that's the second week card we've seen that forces your opponent to discard a card. So that seems to be a small package in Amber, a little bit of a discard package. Um, so certainly it doesn't seem like enough that you would build around a forced discard deck, but that is two, so that's interesting. And because there's not like, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of cards like that, it doesn't seem like this card would synergize with your deck. It almost seems like, I don't know, a bit of an odd one out. Um, because otherwise, this is a pretty weak card, a 2-3 with one lore. So basically you're playing Daisy Duck with the intention of disrupting your opponent, but then you've played a weak card to do that. So it's almost like, well, hopefully you disrupted them enough because this isn't building towards a win condition. It's more of a disruption card. And there's not really support for disruption so far. Especially compared to the clear synergies that they're they're they've shown with the other like like healing and stuff. So Goofy, Musketeer Swordsman for four. Uninkable though. On Garsh. Great, I love it. Whenever you play a character with bodyguard, ready this character. He can't quest for the rest of this turn. Okay, so that again, that's like a he does his thing, a bodyguard comes out, and then he can be safe, right? So, seems pretty good. If you've got a bodyguard, you know, that'll protect his lore. And he has a, he's a bit stronger than some of these other two lore people. But that's probably because he has the downside of a uh, four uninkable. But I would imagine if you're playing him, you're probably playing bodyguards because you want this power. So, he should be something that you intend to play because he's got strong stat, well, strong-ish stats, and then that two lore will be good. And especially, you're probably gonna get four lore off of it relatively easy if you've built your deck around that sort of synergy. So I can imagine him getting played in a bodyguard sort of deck. Mickey Mouse, leader of the band, uh, just a support. But he also has, when you play this character, chosen character gain support this turn. So he can, pass that skill on to somebody else so probably not good still because there's so many support characters already that having one card that gives another character support doesn't really make sense um situational strength and if you take the situation out is a two five with one lore gain good enough for four probably not because this power is just not strong enough compared to some of these other people's Ursula, Eric's Bride, uh, Uninkable. So, oh, so this is a shift, so you can put this on your other Ursulas. And to shift, you need to discard a song card rather than just playing uh, Lower Ink. That seems crazy. You may discard a song card to play this on top of one of your characters named Ursula. Okay. Whenever this character quest, to chosen opponent reveals their hand and discards a non-character card of your choice. That's interesting. So again, this is probably the, this is the third card we've seen that your opponent has to discard. But this is a non-character card. So if they run a character deck, you might not get anything out of their hand. And the shift for this is bad. You don't want to throw away a card. Like discard a card? That's crazy. But I guess like... This is uninkable, but you would probably play this if you run this, so that's probably not a big deal. 2-4 is okay. The 2 lore is the important part, and that discard is the important part. And that's every time they quest, so that pressures your opponent to get rid of their non-character uh, cards when they draw them. Like if they have a full, if they have a hand of 
character cards and they draw an item or a location or something and they know you're going to quest with this again it's either that or discard it right they have to play it or discard it that's interesting i think this card would get played even if you're not trying to run a hardcore discard deck uh, just because it's got two lore it doesn't cost that much and it has a very annoying power but again you couldn't play this immediately, so they would see that this is down and go, oh, I've got to get rid of my uh, non-character cards, or else they're going to discard them. And then you're showing them your hand, too, so you'll know exactly what they have to play as well. That's very strong as well, so seems like a very strong card. Lost in the Woods, a character... Oh, I'm just reading the stuff you know. Oh, it's a song. All opposing characters get negative two until the start of your next turn. Get out of here. Are you kidding me? There's no way this is played. <laughs> At four? At four? Are you kidding me? Okay, surely. All right, Bernard, brand new agent. I'll check it out. At the end of your turn, if this character is exerted, you may ready another chosen character of yours. This is, there's been a few of these now for in the fours. Uh, he's weak, but the power's good. Again, he's gonna be protecting some of your other characters that want, you want protected. Uh, and he's also getting two lore. He's going to be a big target, though. But at 1-5, he, he can probably take a hit or two. So you might get a decent number of lore out of them. And I think I was saying that I thought this was an aggro e deck, but it's definitely not. It's a tempo. These are tempo cards. You're getting powerful plays out each each turn uh, to, try, to try to build that way. So I can see I can see him getting played for sure. Joshua Sweet, the doctor. This is a bodyguard, a 1-5 bodyguard. And he's just too lore. That feels weak. I feel like I'd rather have Bernard in my hand than this guy. He almost does, you know, he can get killed and then the person that you want to protect is still at risk. Whereas with Bernard, that person is not at risk because now they're not exerted anymore at the end of their turn. So... You play Bernard over Joshua Sweet, surely. Unless you have bodyguard specific bonuses like the Goofy card. Uh, but is the 1 5 that strong of a bodyguard? Nope. Not really. I'd probably have rather have a 2 4 that I can at least deal some damage. Um, so I don't. I can't imagine Joshua Sweet here uh, getting play. Uh, I got some more puppies, some Dalmatians. Lucky, the 15th puppy. What is that? Why is that? The 15th puppy? Good as new. Uh, you exert this card and he will reveal the top three cards of your deck. You may put each character card with cost two or less into your hand. Put the rest of the bottom of your deck in any order. And then puppy love as well. Whenever this character quests, if you have four or more characters in play, your other characters get plus one lore this turn. He's uninkable. That's, that seems like a really strong card. So that uninkable is the downside here. I think otherwise you'd play this 100% of the time in a lot of decks. I still think you play this card in decks to reveal... Because not only does that potentially... Whenever you play this, you're playing this on 4, right? So this is potentially taking thinning your deck. Because if those top 3 cards are more than 2... Well, you know. I don't know. You're either getting cards or you're... Or you're moving through your deck i guess so depending on what kind of deck you're running this could be really good or a bit pointless and i think if you're running a deck with a lot of lower cost cards this could put three cards uh into your hand which would obviously be very good so if you are going for that like tempo or aggro -y build and your card you have pretty low cards i think you're probably seeing one to two cards almost guaranteed to be put into your hand with this card um and possibly three so yeah four four ink for a small body it doesn't have good stats but again if you're playing this kind of card where you're trying to fill your hand with low cost cards and you're playing them and then you put him out there and you quest and all of a sudden that's plus you know even just to trigger this to have four characters in play that's four lore to all those characters combined at least right plus him so that could be a five lore play 
I mean, you're only trying to get to 20, so this could be a game ender. <laughs> In some situations, I'm, you know, if there's no stopping that board, that can be the end of it. So I can imagine this card being pretty, pretty powerful in the right spots. I could see this getting played in a lot of decks. So here's another puppy patch, intimidating pup. Uh, it, when exerted, you chosen character gets negative two. Meh, he's a three four. Probably not again seeing play unless you just love a Dalmatian deck. Uh, four uninkable Tinkerbell, generous fairy make a new friend when you play this character look at the top four cards of your deck you may reveal a character card and put it into your hand put the rest on the bottom of the deck in any order so this is a draw one right you're <laughs> out of four cards you're going to have characters there unless you don't put characters in your deck which would be crazy so yeah so a four mana uninkable a 1-4, so that's not strong. A 1-lore, that's okay. That's as standard as it can get, right? And it just draws one character. But it's it's one specific character out of four. So that could be a card that goes really well with your game plan. But I, th this being uninkable, and those stats, and that lore, it's such a weak card besides that power. I don't know if that power is strong enough for an uninkable 4 to draw a single card that is probably above average because you're looking at four cards and picking from one, one character. So you might get unlucky. You might look at three action cards and then a one ink card, right? A character card, and then you can only take that one. So I don't think this is a good card. I don't think this card would get played. Heart of Atlantis, a four mana uninkable life giver, when you exert, you pay two less ink for the next character you play this turn. That's probably good. That's a, you know, being uninkable is not great, but it's an item at least so that you can continually play this. And plus it's just exerting it. So that's a, an ink cheat for at least one of your character cards per turn. So if you have this and you have some card draw, you can get multiple characters into play you know each turn or you could get a bigger card in play you know that's how you cheat cheat cards out and plus you could play this on four exert it because it's an item you can play it right away uh, and put a two out and it's not even like a wasted turn because sometimes you put an item out or a location and that's your whole turn and nothing really happens you could still get a two out with this guy so Seems like a pretty good item. I can imagine this gets played. Bashful, a hopeless romantic. Got some more dwarfs. Oh gosh, this character can't quest unless you have another seven dwarfs character in play. Okay, so obviously, unsurprisingly, there is dwarf synergy, but this is so synergistic that I can't imagine trying to play this in a non-hardcore dwarf deck. <laughs> Hardcore dwarfs. Uh, obviously, three lore is huge. I'm, I don't know if we've seen another three lore yet, so this might be the first one at four here. Two five is pretty decent for this seven in stats. Most of the fours have been six in stats, and so it has good stats for this uh, cost plus really good lore. But it also has that huge caveat of like uh, needing another dwarf in play so that can be too situational especially if the dwarf package just isn't strong enough to compete that means you wouldn't run dwarfs which means you wouldn't run bashful so from what i've seen i wouldn't run the dwarf package um so i don't think bashful is getting played regardless of these uh how good he is that negative is probably just too much uh to to make him see any play but let's see the other dwarfs we've got grumpy bad tempered four mana three four there's trouble brewing your other seven dwar seven dwarf characters get plus one strength <sighs> probably not good enough there's cards that give your other characters all like one strength right and items and stuff like that so like to be so specific is just really weak so i don't think grumpy goes out there which is just another 
weak uh, dwarf synergy card. We have got Mulan reflecting at four mana of three three, but she can be shifted for two ink, so you can throw her on top of another Mulan. Uh, honor the ancestors. Honor to the ancestors. Whenever this character quests, you may reveal the top card of your deck. If it's a song card, you may play it for free. Otherwise, put it on the top of your deck. So really good in a song deck, where you're going to have a higher percentage of playing that song immediately for free. That could be huge. Um, and it says if it's a song card, it doesn't even give you a, a like a ink value for that song card. That could be your highest cost song card that you could possibly play on turn, what, three? If you shifted this, if you already had a Mulan down earlier, I think there's like a two cost Mulan, right? Um, but even like at four, you could that could be such a huge mana cheat out with a if you get lucky enough to draw like a huge song, um, and then even at a four mana three three with two lore, that seems pretty standard for a lot of these characters. So that could be a that just seems like such a huge swing if you get lucky enough to nail one of your songs. I can imagine this, and if you have a song deck, there is no doubt you're putting this card in there. So yeah, seems like a good card. Ariel, 4 mana, 3, 4, voiceless. She cannot sing songs, but she has two lore. Okay, so not great, right? <laughs> whoop de doo um, Probably not going to play Ariel. She could be a shift target, but she, this is already a 4 cost card. I think she had lower Ariels that could be shifted that have better reasons to play them than this. So I don't think you would have this in your deck. We have got a Cinderella at four, a two five, gentle and kind. She can sing fives. Um, so she's got a little bit of a bonus there. A wonderful dream when you exert her, remove up to three damage from a chosen princess character. So better in a princess deck, obviously, because it's not just any character. Three damage heal is pretty good. We've seen a lot of cards that have, are just like heal for three damage and it's an action anyway. So to get that with a 2-5 body with 2 lore, that can also sing 1 card, 1 strength higher. Seems good. I can see Cinderella making some decks. Yeah. Seems good. That seems like, a, that seems like the right kind of heal for a card um, compared to some of the other ones that we've seen. So yeah, it seems pretty decent. Uh, 4 mana, 4 ink, Hades, 3-2. It's, it's a weak body. Let's see what he does. Well of Souls, when you play this character, return a character card from your discard to your hand. Well, that's that's why he has a weak body. He gives you one of your cards back, which is good. Surely this is a great card. Getting cards in your hand and getting cards in your hand that you choose uh, is also very good. You know, you play this on four, you might not have a huge selection of discard cards, but you play this later in the game, you know, you could be picking out a huge card to play again. So yeah. Surely this is a strong card. Uh, here's a four ink uninkable Prince Philip from the monarchy. What? Dragon Slayer. 3-3. Uh, three, three. Heroism. When this character challenges... Oh, I can't read. When this character challenges and is banished, you may banish the challenged character. Hmm, too lore. I don't... Is that good? So I guess you could take out any character basically, right? So that's not bad. It's not like when they challenge you. So you can actually pick the target. So if they have somebody big on board and you have this guy out. And plus that's like such a threat, right? You have Prince Philip on your board. That means if they have huge like characters in their hand, they're going to be worried about playing them with Prince Philip on the board. Because as soon as they exert that big character, Prince Philip's just going to wipe him out, right? He's a bit like a, like a poison character in, in other games like Hearthstone. That can just kill anybody because that's, that's what he can do. He can kill anybody with his, his challenge. And he has two lore. So it's almost like that two lore is almost like pointless, right? Because this is like just like you're a minion killer. You play two lore, you exert him, and now he's like going to be killed by anybody because they don't want his real strength is his challenge. You don't know. He's probably good. Because I haven't seen a character like that yet so far. So 
this might be like the cost for a character that it has that sort of strength or that sort of power or skill or perk or whatever they call whatever this is <laughs> uh yeah so i can imagine him getting played especially in a meta a big a big character meta you would like to have cards like this that can take out big characters pumba i didn't know pumba had two a's friendly warthog a four ink three five one lore great not it's got eight stats but i guess that, that's kind of what i thought it would be eight stats for nothing else why would you play it you know what i mean i, I know this is almost like a filler card right nothing nothing special not going to change any. not going to like you know you don't build around this character so yeah not worth it Rapun isn't this just like the most expensive card rapunzel gifted with healing uh, gleam and glow when you play this character remove up to three damage from one of your characters draw okay draw a card for each one damage remove this way no wonder this character is very expensive on the market you could be drawing three cards with this card that's crazy that is crazy that is so good like these stats don't even matter this could be an action card and you would have it and you would play it at four probably yeah probably it seems like the draw one card is around like two ink so far so maybe one and a half ink so to have a have this with a body with the two lore and a decent uh willpower crazy that's too good yeah this card would be in everybody's deck if it wasn't expensive on the marketplace <laughs> print more rapunzel's disney all right, Hakuna Matata is a song. Remove up to three damage from each of your characters. See, like this is a worse Rapunzel, right? Or how many characters are you gonna have with two to three damage on them? Where this comes when you when you this is really needed. So probably not getting played even in a song deck. You know, you you might draw this and be like, whoa, I don't even have characters that need healing. They're either dead or alive, right? Sometimes that's how it. <laughs> I would imagine that's how it goes a lot of times. Like how many damaged characters are you leaving out there? I guess if you're the one doing the, the attacks, you can you can set it up to heal everybody. Um, but I don't that I don't know about these mass heals. I don't know. It feels weak to me. You have this is sad. You have forgotten me. Uh, form for ink. Each opponent chooses and discards two cards what okay so there is some discard synergy going on with amber oh, which i love i'm gonna be building a discard a discard deck for sure i mean it's an action if this was a song it would be too good right so you're def you have to pay for unless you have some action um cheating out items or something paying four ink to get rid of two of their cards out of their hands Assuming they have two cards, you know, if you get this real late in the game and you're just top decking, they might not have any cards in their hand and this would just be an ink or you just hold on to it until they maybe draw. But yeah, that seems good. That seems like it could be a real pain to uh, have somebody do to you if you're low on cards. Seems like a good card. Uh, Mickey Mouse? We already saw this. This must be the uh, different variety of it. Did we already see this one as well? Yeah, they're just showing me all the Vanellope, Von, whatever. And here's the fancier Rapunzel. Well, it's not showing me. I guess I can click it. I don't know. Who cares? Just a fancier Rapunzel. Okay, that was fours. Cool, cool, cool. All right, let's get into these fives. Fix it. Fe I feel like fix it. Like Felix is always like the first card. Is it in alphabetical order? <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't know. Fix it, Felix Jr. Nice, nice Stewart. Okay, nice Lynn must be the place in this movie uh so this is shiftable for three ink uh your locations get plus two i feel like we haven't seen a load of locations since some of the earlier ones so to have like location specific cards don't know i would say not yet good enough there will always be more locations in the future where location specific cards are probably going to be they will get stronger and stronger but seeing how I haven't seen tons of locations yet, 
this might be a card that does nothing but the stats so probably not good enough mirabelle madrigal the family gatherer 555 five, five. not without my family you can't play this character unless you have five or more characters in play and it has five lore oh boy so this is a that is a crazy situational card and that's a card you build your deck around because if you have five characters in play and you play this card you're having like that swing could be at, it's going to be at least 10 <laughs> 10 lore so this almost feels like your deck would be designed to so this almost makes the healing and stuff make sense this card helps that whole healing package make sense and the whole damage reduction makes sense because you really want your characters to stay alive so that when this card shows up and all of those characters quest at the same time it's all you have like base you can basically win in two turns right so that seems that's got to be difficult to do but i can see an entire deck being based on this card so i would say that this is a top card so yeah interesting very interesting that makes so many of these cards make sense <laughs> all of a sudden everything makes sense it's all coming together with these now that i'm getting into the higher cards which is makes sense because that's where your win conditions usually are so that is a win condition interesting mini mouse drum major uh, another shift card you can for four ink that's not okay <laughs> four ink is not a huge discount on five ink when you play this character if you use shift to play her you may search your deck for a character card and reveal that card to all players shuffle your deck and put that card on top of it okay interesting so a four four is the strength of most four cost cards two lore is fine and searching for the perfect card to draw is basically what's happening so that's interesting that's interesting that seems good yeah that's probably good and that's probably why it's so expensive but you know like to have this shift oh you have to shift it okay that is a can that's a, a strong conditional so the whole strength of this card requires this shift to happen and if you don't shift it this card's it's not good <laughs> it's not as good as the other cards you would use so boy you're you're playing towards this card when you're playing your minis so that means you're you're being less risky with your other minis because you need to shift or else this card is pointless to be in your deck i can imagine this card getting played it's really strong but you have to be smart with it you have to be smart with your earlier mini targets as well this seems like a tough card this seems like it can be really good this is a good card you just have to be smart with it so not probably not an easy card to navigate for a lot of people i can imagine a lot of people messing this card up and their play up with this by thinking i don't know you know what i mean like yeah good card good card oh my gosh this enchanted it looks like a like a virus card or something right like it's like like your screen's going bad revive uh uninkable play a character with cost five or less from your discard for free interesting so once we get through all of our fives we'll see if this is worth it because that's specific that's very specific about reviving a specific character that has already been discarded rather than just playing them normally so this is almost like you want a fifth or sixth character to play yeah so that's basically what that would be not just oh i need four of these characters in my deck you want five you want more than four and that's why you play this so that you can play them again and they'd go right on the board at least i don't know if that's good it might be good i think that might be in very specific decks but probably not in a ton of decks probably not in a tempo deck cinderella melody weaver singer nine that's crazy high but she has very low stats so Whenever this character sings a song, your other princess characters get plus one lore. So really good in princess decks. Decent lore gaining, obviously. But that, being able to sing nine is probably huge if there's a huge nine cost 
eight or nine cost songs that were really good. Cinderella can get them out like way early. So I can imagine that being massive. Depending on the songs that are in the higher ink costs, this could be massive. So yeah, very interesting. Seems like a good card. Here's another mini mouse. Uninkable five bodyguard, one five bodyguard. When you play this character, banish chosen opposing character with five strength or more. That's why it's uninkable five, eh? So that's just like a, almost like a good action. Just getting rid of a strong character like that. And then having a body on the board to, to soak up some damage and protect some other people. I can see this being a very good card. Especially for the, like it's not like huge stats, but that could be a real good swing turn if they just now played um, a, a big card. You just take them out immediately almost. So yeah, it seems pretty good. Mirabelle Madrigal, Gift of the Family, a 3-5. Support, which is always meh. Whenever this, oh, it's uninkable too. Whenever this character quests your other Madrigal characters get plus one this turn. I don't know if we've seen strong enough Madrigal family characters to make me think I'm playing a lot of them enough to get have them on board for this to be a really strong play and for five cost uninkable I feel like a lot of the time you're putting down a five cost three five with with support which isn't always that great so it's not terrible but that uninkable it could be stuck in your hand the whole game right until turn five and then that's your play you're probably not thrilled with it if you don't have other characters on board so do you want to build a deck around trying to make this card really worth it maybe not probably not so this seems a bit iffy it's not terrible and i guess it has the potential to be good i think it depends on how many of these characters you have in your deck makes this card better or worse Pluto, Rescue Dog, 5-4-5. Five, five. To the rescue. When you play this character, heal 3 damage on one of your characters. Seems pretty basic. Um, it's got 9 health, so that's probably what we're seeing at 5s. Maybe not. Maybe 5 to 10, or 9 to 10, because he does have 2 lore, so he's at least uh, doing some quest pressure. But it seems really basic. And just to heal, I don't know. Probably not seeing a lot of play uh we've already seen the cinderella this is just the non-enchanted one kita protector of atlantis can shift three ink on top of one of your other kitas again a, a three five it's pretty low perhaps we can save our future when you play this character all characters get negative all characters all characters that's even your characters until the start of your next turn so that's like a real like shutdown character right that means like nobody's probably challenging so it's almost like a stall uh, a big stall play so everybody's weak and not, probably too weak to attack besides you know people that have four five six strength which is going to be probably a minority at, at this level certainly around uh ink level fives so <clears throat> i cannot yeah that seems to be that's probably good right especially for those kind of decks like the one that's trying to get a lot of characters on board for that that mirabelle you know five lore um, play so i can imagine that being really good in that deck to really slow things down uh, and it would certainly slow down the kind of decks that are trying to trying to damage your guys your characters so kind of like a, it's almost like a, a good bodyguard but doesn't even it's not even a bodyguard right but it's doing like a, a load to protect your characters but it's also protecting their characters, so you want to make sure you have the advantage with, with your deck style. Nani, a bodyguard, a 3-6, to uh, lore. That seems basic. It seems about the same as, uh, who was it, Pluto here. Just a 3-6 instead of a 4-5, so almost exactly the same. So probably also not that good. 99 puppies. Whenever one of your characters quests this turn gain one lore boy that five mana uninkable seems not great this might go in in your magic your mirabelle madrigal big board deck because that could be 
you know, you have her on board with your five other characters, and then you, you know, the next turn when you're going to pop off, you know, five from Mirabelle, five from those other five characters that you have board. So you, that's 10. You play this, that's another six lore. You could go from, you know, zero lore to 16 lore. So all you would need to do would be to have four lore before you pop off with your huge swing turn. So I can imagine that happening. That's a, that would be a huge combo. Yeah, that seems to be that. That is undoubtedly a combo deck. If it's strong right now, I don't know, but surely at some point that was being played regularly. Uh, another Kita, yeah, it's just the enchanted Kita. Eudora, accomplished seamstress, a one nine. So there's that ten cost or that ten power card. Can't be good. Can't be good. A one nine to lore. I mean, it can take some hits, but it's so weak. It's not defending itself, right? Um, I don't see this being a good card, regardless of that nine willpower. Uh, here's another dwarf. Happy, good natured. Uh, just support. A three five with support. Are you kidding me? Like, are you kidding? What? Why? Not good. Give these support characters something else. I can only imagine support characters being good if you're also playing some sort of deck that sends very small minions to challenge, but that would mean you're using cards for those very small minions just so that you can send them in with a with a boosted strength now and then, which I just don't, I don't see that happening in this game. I don't think that's how Lorcana is going to operate. At any point in time, I might be wrong, but these support characters I do not think are strong enough. Mufasa, betrayed leader. Oh, he's so mad about being betrayed. The sun will set. When this character is banished, you may defeat. You may reveal the top card of your deck. If it's a character card, you may play that character for free, and they interplay exerted. Otherwise, put it on the top of your deck. That's always oh, a three-three though at five, but that seems good. Uh, yeah, this card gets played. Getting another character card of any value out, exerted or not, it's just a free card. It's just somebody out on your board. And it could be a huge card if you high roll. So I can imagine this card being very strong. It might have low stats, but if you've got a majority, you know, if you have 70% character cards, then seven out of 10 times, you know what, you're putting that card right onto into play. Um, and especially for these decks that are trying to get wide and have lots of characters out. This is a card that puts, you know, two cards out for one, the price of one. That seems really good. Rapunzel, shift three, gifted artist. Um, zero six, interesting. Whenever you remove one or more damage from one of your characters, you may draw a card. Ooh, interesting. Rapunzel is a big heal heal person um oh man okay so you could play that earlier rapunzel and then draw three two to three cards off of them shift on top of this one the next play and heal somebody else and draw even more cards these rapunzels could be if played right could be huge draw engines which in lorcana seems very very important with a 60 card deck you really want the more you can get through the deck the better especially for a tempo deck. I can imagine this card being very good despite being very weak, but you just want this power. Uh, she's almost like a really good item. <laughs> like, would you exert her? Like, I would just let her chill on the board and constantly draw cards. I mean, this is why you build a uh, lots of heals decks because Rapunzel could draw you so many cards with it. Very interesting. Do you build your deck around this card? And the other Rapunzel, because that mean this means you want to have heals in, and maybe a was there a heal item? I don't remember. <laughs> I've already forgotten all the cards. But if there's a heal item combined with this card, that could be an easy, um, at least draw one or multiple. Especially if you don't exert Rapunzel and she just chills and lets you draw cards with your heals, can be very very strong. The Queen, shift two on your other queens. 
Uh, this is the commanding presence, a five cost four three. Who is the fairest? Whenever this character quests, chosen opposing characters get negative four this turn and chosen character gets plus four. So that's much stronger than the normal damage negating, uh, you know, when you take away their strength. I mean, negative four strength is going to really take away most cards that we've seen, certainly, all of their strength out which means they're going to be easy targets and plus to give one of your characters plus four you're probably taking out whoever you want to take out with no damage coming back to that character right so that seems really 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 strong and this weak stat line kind of is the reason i'm surprised this is an uninkable honestly this seems like that level of, of a strong card and also two lore is solid so yeah do you, you, everybody would play this card in your deck. And it's a shift too. You could play this like so early. I mean, you're only like, I don't remember what the other queens do, but I would imagine that you'd play the other queens and then this one, get this out early. Well, you you know, this isn't even that early of a card. You can play this late in the game and, and take out a strong unit with a weak unit, a weak, strong character with a weak character. And that would be good. Uh, an early game you could take out anybody so yeah awesome that seems like a really good card is this the same goofy we saw earlier i don't think so this is a different goofy goofy musketeer bodyguard three six that's okay when you play this character you may remove up to two damage from each of your musketeer characters we have seen a fair well not a fair a few musketeers so far so are you building a musketeer deck and this will let you heal those musketeers maybe maybe not though is a three six strong enough as a bodyguard it seems okay but hmm depends on the other musketeers we've seen a, a few of them i think that that daisy was that daisy that discarded a card i think that was a musketeer so that would probably be one that i'd like to play so this might be okay i'd have to search for all the musketeers and be like hmm was this good enough for a deck if this mini mouse is a musketeer just another bot well that was a good card right uh banishes a card so that would be one you could you could heal if need be so there's a few but that's definitely conditional on how strong your musketeers are whether or not this will heal anybody right like you play this card and it doesn't do anything you then you have to consider is a three six bodyguard strong enough and it's not right because there's other three six bodyguards that are so on also aren't strong but has more lore so if i'm not healing musketeers then i'd rather play nani and would i rather do i want this card in my deck i don't think so so i'm not sure i want goofy in my deck unless these other musketeers are good enough for me to build a deck around maximus a palace horse a five ink four five this is another bodyguard and this has got support. So he is at least giving another character a lot of strength when he quests, but I don't really still think it's that strong unless you have lots of small cards that this allows you to do a lot of good challenging. So I think in a situation where you are a challenge heavy deck to try to control like a, you know, a control a controlling character build this could be good to give power to weaker units um, but he is also a bodyguard so they're going to be taking this card out in one turn assuming he even lasts that one turn because bodyguards usually enter exerted if you want them to be doing their their uh, bodyguarding which you don't have to if you just want if you're wanting that support but then it's like is that worth it just to play this card to have a strong support power? I'm not sure. I don't think so. Moana? First Moana. Is this the first Moana that we've seen so far? That can't be true. Uh, Moana of Matanui? Uh, we can fix it. That seems like somebody else's uh, tagline. Whenever this character quests, you may ready your other princess characters. They can't quest for the rest of the turn. That seems really strong in a princess deck. Um... There's loads of princesses, so I'm sure that a princess deck is something that can be built. So that can be very protective of your other princesses who quest, and then you quest with Moana, and 
they're back to being in ready position so they can't be attacked as easily. Uh, and plus three lore, pretty solid. So yeah, I can see, I can see Moana being played pretty regularly, uh, especially in, in the sort of Amber decks that were that I'm thinking of now, where you're trying to keep your characters alive a little bit more. So yeah, makes sense for the sort of decks that you're probably building, that you're trying to go wide and trying to stay alive. Uh, is this an Enchanted that we've seen? Yes. And then these two. Okay, so that's all the fives. On to the sixes. Maid Marian, Lady of the Lists. Lady of the Lists? What does that mean? <laughs> if it pleases the lady, when you play this character, chosen opposing character gets negative five strength until the start of your next turn. Mm, probably not good enough. Especially like when that queen is negative four and then plus four to another character. So this seems a higher cost, a way higher cost if you shift that queen too. And all it's doing is taking strength off of one character. I don't think so. I don't think so. It doesn't seem strong enough. Uh, here's a song, Blast From Your Past. Uh, it's uninkable. Name a card. Return all characters' cards with that name from your discard to your hand. Okay. That's probably, in some situations, absolutely crazy good. And then in other situations, pretty good, especially if you're singing it. That could be getting you, I mean, at least one card, right? At least one card. So you'd be you'd be spending one card to gain one card that you want at worst. And then every other card you get on top of that one card is even better. And you're probably holding this until you can get at least two cards. And if I'm guessing all character cards, so if you just say like Daisy Duck, right? And you have four different Daisy Ducks that you've played throughout the game, and they all come back into your hand, you could, how many cards could you potentially draw with this? Or return from your discard pile, like 16? If you played all your Daisy Ducks possible, and then you just say, oh, Daisy Duck, and you're like, oh, there's my entire discard pile back in my hand. That seems crazy. This seems really good. And if you sing this song, it's like nothing, right? You're getting a huge amount of your cards back from your discard. That also makes it seem like you gotta be careful with your inking. I guess you'd probably have like something in like a play in mind if you were doing this. Because you wouldn't want to ink those cards that you would intend to blast from your past. Because that'd be one less card that you could potentially get back in your hand. This card seems massive. It seems like you could build a deck around, maybe. And it's certainly better than that revive card, right? I guess, well, I mean, they don't go right into play like the revive, but getting loads of cards back for possibly zero cost seems crazy. Seems really good. Prince Eric, Ursula's groom. I thought that was Aladdin. I was like, what? His name's not Eric. Uh, shift four. So you could cheat this guy out a bit early under Vanessa's spell while you have a character named Ursula in play this character gains bodyguard and gets plus two to his willpower so it could be a six five five for two lore which isn't good but it could possibly be a five seven which is probably not that great even as a uh, bodyguard so it's almost like if you don't shift this while you have Ursula out in play this character would be middling, and even at best, it's probably good. I think the when the when the high roll of this card isn't that great, that makes the card itself not that good. Like overall, right? Like you're not. I'm not like wowed by the potential this card has to be like, oh man, I've got a five seven out there. That I paid six for like probably I would imagine a lot of the cards that we'll see in the six cost are going to be around five seven without having to have um, Ursula in play right so it doesn't seem very good to me this is a four eight you know what I mean and I don't have any conditions to this like it's not a bodyguard but it would have as many stats as Eric with a conditional <laughs> with a condition to be met um, so, Mr. Snoops, an up businessman, just a 4-8, 2 lore, 
basic card, probably nobody plays this. Per Perdita, Devoted Mother, 6 Uninkable. Interesting. Come along, children. When you play this character, and whenever she quests, you may play a character with cost 2 or less from your discard for free. Hmm, probably pretty good. Uh, uninkable at a 6 can be um, not great to get early. You know, you look at this, and if this card can stay alive for more than one turn, you're getting more and more cards out of your discard and onto the board. Because it's not even just like, take it out of your discard and put it in your hand. It's, it plays a character. So it's going straight from your discard into play, uh, which makes that very strong. That makes it a two card play, basically, with potential to be three card if it stays alive, four card if it stays alive, you know what I mean? So if, if they can't counter this card, it just ramps up the strength on the board. And you can be playing some very good two cost cards. You could play a two cost card that you could shift somebody onto, right? So yeah, that seems like a really good card. Christopher Robin, six cost, two six, very low. We'll always be together. Whenever you ready this character, if you have two or more other characters in play, gain two lords. That seems crazy, right? So you'd have to obviously have more characters on board. So those decks that are trying to go wide, obviously Christopher Robin fits right in, but it's when you ready him. So you'd have to exert Christopher Robin and then have him survive. And he's going to probably have a very big target on his back when you do that. Uh, because obviously you don't want this guy getting four lore on you if you can uh, deny that happening. So Christopher Robin with a bodyguard out on board somewhere might be pretty tough to get through his six damage and whatever the bodyguard has. Hmm. I wonder if, what if you exert him and then you have one of the characters that readies him? That would count, right? That would give you an instant extra two lore because you would be readying him yourself. So if you had like one of those like Bernard characters out and you quest with Christopher Robin and then Bernard, with Bernard you choose to put him back into play. He'd, all, he'd just get that, that'd be like a four lore play like right away. I can imagine some strategies around Christopher Robin that aren't too complicated that will help him get some decent lore. He is a very high cost character, so this would be like your late game finishers, really, I suppose. But I can see him fitting in some decks. Mickey Mouse, friendly face. Oh, you know, when they say friendly face, you know he's up to something, right? Uh, six cost, one six. That's lower than Christopher Robin. Glad you're here. Whenever this character quests, you pay three less for the next character you play this turn, and he quests for three. You know, mana cheating is mana, or not mana, but ink cheating is ink cheating. Um, and this is like a really high cost for that sort of tactic to be happening. So obviously you could quest with him, get three, and then play a three or less card immediately. Uh, and that's probably what's happening. Hopefully at this point in the game, you actually do have enough cards to be taking advantage of this. I think that would be the, the question, but cheating out three ink is really strong. And having this lore is really strong and he's very very weak though so that's like such a big downside but probably at this point in the game you're this is probably like when you're rushing towards the end right and plus if this is uh three or less you could be cheating out a bodyguard and keeping mickey mouse strong for the next turn and another th and another three and another ink cheat yeah this could be part of your you know game plan for winning the game at the end you know, a strong Mickey, a couple of turns for with Mickey uh, could wrap it up. You know, that could be, that's, you know, six lore in two turns. So if that's what you're looking at, that could be the finish. Uh, so probably a very good card. Snow White, Wellwisher, Uninkable, 3-5. Okay, let's see what you got. Can be shifted. Wishes come true. Whenever this character quests, you may return a character card from your discard to your hand. So another of those... Returning a character from your discard, which is always a very strong play, and this is any character, uh, and it's not going right into play, it's going into your hand, so it's a little bit weaker than those ones that put them right into play, but again, it is any character, so you can get that perfect next play for whatever your strategy requires, which is always 
always good because it gives you that flexibility that you don't always get in uh, some decks. Again, a uninkable six seems really, really hard to put in too many into your deck, but it can shift four. But I don't think the other Snow White was that good. I can't remember. I thought it was more of a dwarf specific, a dwarf synergy. I don't know if there's a non-dwarf synergy Snow White that this would be better on if you were shifting. If you could shift this to make it a four ink three five with this power and this lore, that seems really good. That seems like a really good shift. Not as great as a six, I don't think, but that shifted one would be a huge power move, I think. Yeah, so I can imagine this being a pretty good card. We got some stitches. I think we've seen some stitches. So this is a shift four, a three five, but this one's inkable, so it's probably not as good as Snow White. Whenever you play a character with cost two or less, you may exert them to draw a card. Ooh, that seems pretty good. Yeah, exerting just to draw a card, that's probably pretty good for a lot of the times. It's a bit of a slow, you know, if you're trying to tempo out your lore and your questing sure it's not great to be using them to draw a card but drawing a card is so strong um and it's a th three lore yeah seems good it seems pretty solid it might have low stats but like this is really good and when you need that three lore that's pretty pretty good too because he's definitely going to be a target because of how strong this is and again shifting him on four to save some uh ink that you could potentially throw down a, you know, you could play him, throw down a, a card character that's two or less and instantly draw a card, right? Um, and plus, if that was a bodyguard, I mean, I know that like the bodyguards usually aren't around the two, but you would already exert them anyway, so it wouldn't even be a big deal. Yeah, uh, and that might be it. Yeah, that's it for sixes. Not as many sixes, obviously. You don't get as many of the uh, big cards because you don't get to play as many big cards before the game's over. Hardly any sevens, right? Wreck it, Ralph. Admiral Underpants. I've uh, caught the coolest friend, it says. When you play this character, return a character card from your discard to your hand. If that card is a princess character card, gain two lore. Okay, obviously. I mean, seven uninkable is huge, uh, but that is so strong, and you're obviously going to have princess cards in your uh, discard pile by this time, or else you wouldn't play this card. So, but let's think about it. We're only going to get two lore from that and that's an easy one that's getting us a card yeah so it goes in your hand so that's good you've got you got a card and he's a big body uh six seven so he can do some uh some challenging and if you want to quest with him it's two but you're probably looking more at a challenge with with these stat lines for sh for at least a couple turns so yeah i can imagine this guy being one of your uninkables that you'd put in your put in your deck very strong play getting cards in your hand especially in the late game because if you don't have a lot of card draw and you're just top decking top decking top decking this can be a two card swing you know i guess giant mickey i thought it was like a gigantic mickey mouse he's just on a platform uh uninkable mickey mouse musketeer captains there's a musketeer a three six man some of these huge cards that are only under 10 stats right maybe that's just like the ceiling for these cards is just 10 stats anyway. He could shift five, so he could cheat him out a bit. He's a bodyguard and support. When you play his character, if you use shift to play him, you may draw a card for each character with bodyguard in play. That seems interesting. That makes me wonder how many bodyguards you would be playing in these sorts of decks. I think that really highlights what they're trying to do with the Amber decks. Survivability, protecting your lore machines, and obviously Mickey could be a, a capstone of a strong bodyguard surviving deck where you play him and you have one to two bodyguards also in play and he draws you two cards. Does he count himself as a bodyguard? Probably not. No, I doubt it. So a shift five, you know, is that strong enough after all of that? I can see the deck that he fits into and is strong in. So I can... I would guess that this guy does get played in those sorts of survivor bodyguard decks because he would be a good play in those situations. So probably, there's probably a deck with this guy in him. Look at this family for seven cost or a song. Sing together seven. 
any number of your teammates, you or your teammates characters with total cost seven or more may sing this for free. Okay, so multiple characters can add up to seven for this. Look at the top five cards of your deck. You may reveal up to two character cards and put them into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your deck in any order. That's gotta be great, right? There's even that one of, one of those, was it an Ariel or a Cinderella could sing nine? So could potentially get two character cards of your choosing into your hand. Probably pretty strong. You probably don't wanna play this as a seven, but obviously you could if you needed to, to get two more cards into your hand but having your character sing it to get draw two. Yeah, that's good. And it's not just draw two, it's draw two that you get to choose from, which makes it an even stronger play. Because if it was just draw two, it would probably be too expensive. It'd probably be like a five coster. And imagine if you're playing that one deck where it's like, draw your next card, and if it's a song, play it for free, and you get this. And plus there's also some cards that let you put specific cards onto your next draw so you could even set up those sorts of plays and cheat this card out for nothing and draw two cards that you want to draw that would be such a powerful move um, to really set up the plays that you want to make so yeah i can imagine this card being a very strong card pluto determined defender a seven cost three eight so he's got 11 stats that's the highest we've seen and he could be shifted for five so on turn five, you could be potentially putting out 11 in stats. And he's got a bodyguard. Uh, at the start of your turn, remove up to three damage from the... Oh, boy. Okay, so not only is he a bodyguard, but he can heal himself. I feel like if you get this card out on five, there won't be a lot to challenge him. Um, and the fact that he can heal makes him pretty strong, I would think. He would be such a huge target for uh, removal actions and items, I'm sure. Because if you have a lot of smaller characters, he could be very difficult to remove from the board with that that self heal. Uh, yeah, I, seems pretty good. It's 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 expensive, but like again, if you can shift him out, and I think maybe some of those earlier Plutos are decent enough to be in play, so you can probably set this up to get him out at five somewhat regularly. And he's inkable, worst case scenario, right? So it's not the worst if he's you know inked because you'd like draw him at your first turn or something. Seems pretty decent for a bodyguard. I can see this guy getting getting play. Cobra Bubbles, just a social worker, a seven cost, five nine, two lore. Okay, so 14, that's the biggest we've seen after Pluto. So he's a huge body, but what are you doing with him at the end of the game here? Just challenging? Again, these characters that are don't really have an action that they do it just seemed like too much of a downside to be filling your deck with them i don't see him getting played king louis is this the first jungle book character we've seen uh king louis jungle vip seven cost three eight i lay it on the line whenever another character is banished you remove may remove up to two damage from this character so a bit similar to that pluto except now you could be the one challenging uh and healing yourself and plus, if other characters are getting banished and this guy is heavily damaged, he'd just heal himself up too. So that would be, that could be interesting. That's a big body. But again, these seven costs, I feel like if I'm paying seven ink, I should be playing cards that are like winning me the game. And is King Louie winning me the game? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I'm really excited to get him down on the board. I'm not, I don't know. He seems okay. He might be good, but I, I I'm not sure I see the deck that he's in. I mean, he, he does have that survivability. So maybe at this point in the game, you're getting your high survivability cards out so that you can get those big swing plays with your, uh, what's her name, Madrigal main character. <laughs> I already forgot her name. So I don't know about King Louie. Doesn't seem super good. Seems just kind of like average good. All right, Stitch, Carefree Surfer, a 4-8. Ohana, when you play this character, if you have two or more other characters in play, you may draw two cards. This seems like a definite for a lot of these decks that we've been kind of like imagining. Uh, at this point in the game, you sh I feel like if you don't have any card, if you don't have any characters on your board and you're playing this guy anyway, you're probably way behind. So I, I would think that 
the kind of decks that Amber seems to be liking is ones that have cards on the board, characters on the board. So this guy should probably always draw you two cards. So yeah, that seems like a, a definite for a lot of those decks. And it's a big body. Um, and he's also going to get you two lore if you need to. So yeah, solid card. Uh, and that might be it for the sevens. Let's look at eights. <laughs> Only two so far. Okay. Got a Hades. Oh, this might just be one. It's just one. <laughs> Hades, King of Olympus. He's a six, seven. Shift six. So you could get him out of six. This character gets plus one lore for each other villain character you have in play. So again, I don't know how many villains I've like thought about playing. This character gets... Okay, so that's like like an ongoing. So it could go up or down depending on how many characters you have in play. But I think the earlier, the, the smaller Hades was also good. So you probably do have a shift target. His eight uninkable is huge. That's huge. Um, so that's a real maybe. But probably pretty good. Yeah, I could see that being played. It could be a big swing if you've got a, a lot of villains. Kristoff at nine, uninkable. Jeez Louise, three, seven. For each song card in your discard, you pay one ink left. Well, that's, you gotta keep track of how many cards you've discarded, how many song cards you've discarded. So he could be in a, uh, a song deck, could be cheap, 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 right? Probably get him down to like five easy. So you'd have a three, seven bodyguard with three lore, at, you know, you can get him down to five, four, probably pretty easily. If you're going for heavy songs, this could be a good card. I think this would be a good card. It'd be something to definitely keep track of though, right? Say, oh yeah, I've got, I've got uh, nine song cards on my discard. Don't worry about, don't check or anything, but uh, yeah, he's free. All right, turn about 10, 10 ink, turn a bog, nine, nine. For each character card in your discard, you pay one ink less. What? When you play this character, shuffle all character cards from your discard into your deck? Okay. So again, similar to... God, what? How do you not play this guy? This guy could easily come down pretty early. You know, turn five? Probably? Regularly could be down? If you played one character card per turn? And a lot of your turns you're probably trying to play... You know, a lot of the decks you're probably playing one each easy relatively easily and then some of those cards you know you can get two cards down at once i feel like you're probably playing this guy if he started in your deck you could probably get him out if he started in your hand you'd probably get him out at like six seven and then you're getting a nine nine on the board and like, i mean i guess shuffling all those cards back in your decks probably is, is a bit of a downside um especially with some of the discard synergies that we've seen where you're getting cards back, you're getting princesses back, you're saying Aladdin, that Aladdin spell that you say a name and all those characters come back. That wouldn't be good with this, but you wouldn't build your deck around getting those discard backs if you wanted Chernobog in. And I feel like you probably want Chernobog in a lot of your decks, especially ones that you're playing a lot of minions on. Like <laughs> You put Chernobog and all those, and your 99 Dalmatians in your deck, and you just... Dogs and Chernobog crushing it. Surely that is the most powerful deck possible. And that's it. That's Amber. So looking at Amber, it seems to be a main focus is tempo, trying to get cards out on the board every turn, trying to keep those cards alive with your bodyguards and your heels. And then your end game seems to be around those big swings of lore with your your Madrigal at, what was it, five? Your your Mirabelle Madrigal that can get five lore by herself if there's a big board. And there's a lot of ways to get those big boards, such as searching your discard and getting those cards back in your hand, which means you're gonna have more character cards to be playing regularly. And with some of those heals, like Rapunzel's heals, the uh, other Rapunzel, what was it, a four? Assuming you can afford it, this is an expensive card in the marketplace. But, you know, she could draw three cards. You're getting more cards out. You're inking regularly because you've got those cards in hand. You play this other... You build a heal deck with this other Rapunzel to get more cards whenever you do heal. If you do build around that heal deck and pump her in there, you could be regularly drawing cards. 
and then the more characters you have in your discard you get churn a bog out nice and early it would be a very difficult card to get rid of without a action that banishes a card or some like really strong challengers i would suppose so i can imagine this guy coming down early in some games being a massive swing uh, and being very difficult to deal with and at the same time a song deck could also get uh Kristoff down early as well so you do have these strong cards that you can actually cheat out pretty early we did see some hades what was the other Hades? i think he was pretty early that was decent i don't know if i can search for all these cards i'm just trying to like remember but yeah so i can see i don't know if about song deck a song deck might work so maybe with a uh oh yeah so like a song deck with this right you can draw cards with this item that would definitely be huge to get one or two items down to always have that uh draw engine going so that seems like a really strong item to me especially in a song deck obviously and some of these cards are pretty good at you know singing a song well this is a song that returns a character from your discard so that's probably a bit weak but probably still gets played so yeah i think with amber you see tempo decks potential wide board potential uh heal potential which i don't think is super strong there's a lot of support cards which i don't think they are strong the locations didn't really wow me and there is location support so i'm not sure if those will be super strong well, let's see looking back at this one let's see this would get you another character from your discard too so there is that discard bounce going on uh, which I think is strong. There's very slight forcing your opponent to discard synergy going on, which is probably not enough there to build your deck around, but it could still be a very disruptive play. The dwarf synergy seems not good enough, so I don't think that probably gets play at all. But yeah, so it'll be good. It'd be interesting to see how the other decks look and which one would be good with amber with the synergies that they have i think stronger songs maybe could uh make a strong song deck and these wide decks for that that madrigal uh, power play i think in the late game could be really really hard to stop if they have loads of characters uh there might be board wipes though so there might be you know they build a big board you know what they're doing you wipe their board and that's the end of them right um if that's their end game play we'll have to see what cards can stop the amber uh big plays because i'm there's 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 definitely cards that can completely one shot a min or a character of any size so somebody could play a chernabog and then you just use an action card that kills that banishes a character right like dragon fire uh, and that's that but you don't always have dragon fire and if they can get their chernobog out there and all of a sudden he's wrecking all of your dudes it can be very difficult uh so i bet that's a regular a regular deck built around chernobog the like last card we look at and go oh okay this is somebody you build a deck around right maybe i should start at the uh higher numbers and then figure out how i would build my deck around those guys but i think there's a lot of really strong lore gaining cards you know like christopher robin i can see plays that get him an easy four before he can even get challenged and maybe even six if you can if you play him right you play christopher robin he gets that two lore from questing you ready him with a different character to make him safe he gains two lore on the next one because you have two characters in play and then he quested again for six and that's just one character getting you six lore in the span of two turns and there's a lot of characters, I feel like, in Amber that are giving you those two lores. That Daisy Duck, like I said at the beginning, that Daisy Duck engine getting you two lore with a big body that's probably hard to get rid of. You might have four to six lore just from one character before you're even getting these huge plays. And if you can get that early uh, lore ramp going, then the other person might be playing catch up so much that you're running away with it with a lot of these characters that do give you that two lore. So you might just, I can see that tempo deck without an answer for it, just running away with it, which is what you want to do with a tempo deck, right? Uh, so I can imagine a tempo deck being strong with Amber. I can imagine a song deck being strong. I can imagine that a controlling deck, I just, I don't know if there's answers with this 
Amber for a aggro deck or even like a strong control deck that is wiping your characters out regularly because this you want to build wide boards I think with Amber and I feel like they don't really build those wide boards until later in the game when you get these characters that bounce or play a character for free. So maybe a stronger... I don't know what counters this. An aggro deck would probably counter it. I don't know if a control deck would. I think a tempo would beat a control deck here. Because you'd always be getting that... Those lore... You know, two... Two lore a turn with a character. That could build probably too quick. Uh, but yeah, it'd be interesting to see... How the other decks synergize with these guys. Because this is the first amount of cards I've looked at. So... Alright hope I wasn't too inaccurate with my predictions on how these cards are. I might be. I might be completely wrong. Uh, time will tell. Until the next card caller card viewing rating thing. Until then, bye. Adios.